What's going on, Evan Nation? John Pemba here with James Grani. Welcome to the Quick Pitch LB DFS podcast and live stream recording here for Tuesday's 11 game main slate. James, we have a monster day here on Tuesday. Uh, maybe some weather impacting. We had a game canceled on us for Monday. If you're looking at the little symbols here uh, over on DraftKings, we see the rain symbol, Arizona, St. Louis. Uh, so we'll have to be on the lookout and see if that game will be impacted or not. Of course, this is our first look podcast for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, maybe watching it here on the Better Sports Network or on the Fantasy Alarm YouTube page. Uh, James and I give you our first look take here on today's slate. We'll be back live at 5 p.m. Eastern to bring you all the updated lineup news, uh, all the updated weather news, and further breaking down and helping you guys set your lineups here. So uh, stick with us all day long. If you're not yet a member of the Fantasy Alarm family, you see the scroll down at the bottom if you're tuning in. If not, you can go to fantasyalarm.com slash all pro for those of you who are listening uh, through Apple, Google Play, you know, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever. Uh, fantasyalarm.com slash all pro. Promo code MLB50 saves you 50% off the first six months. That's $19.98 a month for the first six months. Takes you right up through the football season because you get access to all the sports that we have available here at Fantasy Alarm. James, now that that pitch is over, let's talk about the slate. How do you feel? Uh, you know, 11 games is a lot of baseball. Um, it's 11 games that includes cores. And, John, we have a doozy. Uh, Vince Velasquez takes on Jose Urena um, in our cores field matchup. Um, we not only have cores, um, we have Jose Urena, of course. And we have Vince Velasquez. Uh, maybe the best pitcher in the league. So what so, version of Vince Velasquez shows up today? Because he yeah. was an absolute animal in his most recent start. Yes, that is because he is also Dave Batista. Um, <laughs> we've never seen them two in the same room together. Uh, I mean, it's an interesting slate. We have um, some solid names, two names on DraftKings over 10K and Spencer Strider and Clayton Kershaw. We have a couple of very good pitchers, at least a bunch of guys that have pitched really well in the next tier. Uh, and we actually have better value than seemingly we've had. And I say that with like tentatively better value than we've had um, in in past slates. So um, definitely an interesting slate. Um, There's always value in the outfield, James. There, well, I was more so thinking about pitching. Um, sure. There is always there is always outfield value. Um, shifting our attention over to Viva Las Vegas. Um, I don't see... It's pretty crazy to see, but nobody currently over a minus 170 favorite. Jordan Montgomery, 170 uh, in DraftKings Sportsbook. Logan Gilbert and the Seattle Mariners, minus 165. Marcus Stroman is minus 170 against Oakland. Um, Clayton Kershaw is 160, minus 165 on the money line against the Mets at home. Uh, Tyler McGill opposing him. So, like, nothing really stands out there, which is kind of surprising that we don't have anybody uh minus 200 or better um and then of course you know the pirates and rockies open at 12 it's already been bet up to 12 and a half so um already been bet up to 12 and a half as we're you know pittsburgh is scoring a lot of runs on uh on um monday night so if only somebody like told you guys that kyle freeland was likely gonna get blown up Sure. Only there was like a daily live stream and podcast you could have tuned into. Uh, you would have gotten that information. Yeah. All right. It was have... us, James. We did. We did. We, where could we, you have? <laughs> we told everybody. Little, little uh, humble, the humble brag there. Listen, um, the Pirates are like under 15%. For yeah. It's, you know, the majority it's crazy. of them outside of like a Brian Hayes here. So, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you rode with the Pirates, you were a Buckeye with us today, you know. You, you were a Buckeye. You got some <laughs> low roster ship there, so. Um, shout out Colby Conway and Josh shout Wagner, shout resident out. family party Pirates fans. Yeah, the only two uh, probably that, you know, or at least Colby outside of um, Pittsburgh. I don't, I don't know. Colby it's Conway, eight. the Pittsburgh Pirates, Houston Texans fan. Yeah, the every, every we see you see that every day, John. Honestly, yeah. um, well, a lot of losing in the Conway family. Colby's a winner in real life. His teams, uh, not so much. Um, yeah, I mean, 12 and a half implied runs or the over-under there in the uh, Pittsburgh and Colorado game. Only one game at nine. 
uh, Toronto and Houston. Actually, the Angels and the Yankees are also at nine. Uh, Jose Suarez versus Clark Schmidt, two guys that have not pitched well recently. So um, interesting, a uh, few interesting games. And obviously, you know, we had eight games. It, it was nine. It was eight, ended up being eight on Monday. 11 games affords you a few more game, uh, teams to possibly fade cores with. But again, Jose Urena, Vince Velasco is not sure we want to fade course. Right. Uh, I would, I would agree with you there. All right. Let's get into pitching. Uh, DraftKings can't figure it out. Still, so Spencer Trotter as a relief pitcher, but that's fine. Uh, he, <laughs> <laughs> uh, $10,400 here for Strider against San Diego. Clayton Kershaw at home against the Mets at 10 1. Jordan Montgomery at home against Arizona, but like you said, we got to watch the weather there on that one, 9,500. Uh, McGill up to $9,200. He's got the Dodgers. Uh, that's your 9K and above range. How are you feeling about this group here? Um, I have interest in almost all of them. I mean, Schreider, we know, has a ton of upside. Even in a game, you know, he struggled in back-to-back games and still has nine strikeouts. So... Like, even in games where Spencer Strider isn't getting you length, he is at times wild. Um, He has massive strikeout appeal. He has nine strikeouts in in all three of his starts this year. So um, I like Strider at the top. I like Kershaw at the top. Um, You know, he's been okay. I I don't know if the 10-1 price is justified. I'd rather just play Jordan Montgomery 9-5, who's definitely been more reliable than Kershaw um, and has a slightly better matchup. I would say the Mets are a more potent offense. Um, so you would think so. But Arizona keeps putting runs on the board. So they just is... beat Sandy. They they you know hit the grand slam tonight on uh, Palente, right for uh, the Cardinals there. Yeah. So. yeah, you're not wrong. Um, I do like Jordan Montgomery there. Um, he's got really good road. Uh, sorry, really good home splits since being traded to the Cardinals last year. So yeah, I'm looking up Arizona's. Uh, team OPS 716 against Southpaws, they're 17th, um, 316 Boba, so they're like middle of the pack. 21% K rates actually higher than um, what it is against right handed pitchers. So I like Montgomery. McGill is McGill has been really good. I just don't know if this is the spot for him, especially if we're paying 9200 and there's a chance that he's not striking out more than three batters, which yeah. he's done. I think the chalk, personally, probably multiple variations of like plays you can go to, but I think Marcus Stroman probably checks in, if not the highest rostered pitcher of the slate, second. Yeah. Um, upon this, this is a version of Stroman that you know I feel like we haven't seen. No, this is what we've been wanting for like since Toronto days, right? Yeah. Like, um, and. All three of his starts were at home. We talk about how tough Chicago can be at times. And that Seattle game was, was the one the that had game. the 25 mile hour wins. Yep. And he did exactly what you said. 11 ground balls, just three fly balls. Did give up two earned runs there, but he kept the ball down. And for a ground ball pitcher, you'll love seeing six, six, and eight strikeouts. Yep. Um, you know, it's just Oakland, right? They're, they're being a little pesky tonight against Wesniski. Probably not going to be the same level of success against Stroman, you would assume. You give Stroman a big ballpark and he's throwing ground balls anyways. Yeah. Like, uh, I would agree with you. I think the the clear chalk uh, on an 11 game slate is going to be Marcus Stroman. Yep. Um, you nailed it. I, I have nothing really to add. I think, you know, the, the ground balls coupled with the strikeouts have been awesome because mm-hmm. the strikeouts, I feel like, have been, has been like the thing lagging behind usually. Um, because the ground ball has never been the problem, but now we're getting ground balls and the strikeouts. I mean, yeah, give yeah. us a strikeout per inning, Marcus. Like, well, right. your, your fantasy points will explode. So, yep. uh, I'm curious what changed with him. Um, you know, I, I haven't dug deep into the, you know, the, the metrics there. If he's throwing more breaking balls or cutters or fastballs, usually, uh, when guys all of a sudden have this level of success, something has adjusted in their repertoire or just you know spin rates or you know who knows what so um got to dig a little deeper into that i'm on the playbook for this slate too by the way so uh, you know good luck everybody uh i'll have that out and not throwing a curveball this year okay um which he had only thrown like three and two percent the last two years 
but a lot more sliders and a lot more cutters. Uh, the slider is up 9% from last year. The cutter percentage is up uh, 5% from last year. So, right. maybe those, those, I mean, those pitches, you know. 100%. Uh, the little things like that change. And if that's now, you know, driving uh, the, the bad contact against him, I'll, I'll power to it. Right. Um, Mid tier here. Um, you know, Sonny Gray against Boston. We know we talk about the Boston lineup, but the, the Boston Red Sox keep kind of putting runs up, even when their lineup looks atrocious. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know how they're doing it, but they're, but they're doing it. But, you know, Sonny Gray has been pretty good. Uh, Logan Gilbert gets Milwaukee. We talk about it every slate. Milwaukee is either going to hang a crooked number on you or they're not going to score at all. So great for tournaments uh, here with, with Logan Gilbert at $8,500. Um, and then I probably give Nathan Evaldi another crack in Kansas City um, at $7,800. He had the strikeouts. He just got absolutely shelled there. Uh, probably gonna be, I'm, I'm willing to run it back with him. Yeah, so uh, I like Sonny Gray. The only concern is like 78 pitches was a weird. Like where they took him out of that game was weird. It didn't make any sense. Yeah, um, they, and there hasn't been a reason. They just decided to take him out, right? That was maybe they didn't want him facing the th the lineup third time around. Who knows? But that's obviously a little concerning. If that's yeah. gonna because he went 83 and then he had such a dominating start against Houston, maybe they kind of let him go 98 and then they pull him at 78. So like it was is it was like 80 the plan for this guy? You know, and he just and like you said, he was just so good. They're like, all right, well, we we yeah. can't take him out. Right, he's our best player right now. We might as well just see what we, <laughs> we ride with him here. Um, I I agree with you. Boston's also just better at home, so I don't know. You know that that again that lineup is weird. Uh, we we joke all the time around here. Being again, I'm I'm a Red Sox fan. I live just on the side of the city. It's like if you look at the Boston Red Sox lineup, why wouldn't you just walk Rafael Devers every game, right? Why even pitch? Because <laughs> he's the only one that's really doing damage to these teams here. I right. uh, did it again tonight. It almost came back against the Angels in the, in the bottom of the ninth. You know, just don't pitch don't pitch to Rafael Devers. Pitch to everybody else. Right. Um. But yeah. So Gray's at 86. I don't know. I'd rather play Go Gilbert probably. Um, at that point, but uh, and also Strowman's eighty eight, so like you're you're not gonna play Gray over Strowman, I don't think so. I mean, you could also play them both because yeah. I don't think we were necessarily completely sold on the top tier. Like Kershaw obviously has a tough matchup against the Mets, and he could be really good. And Spencer Strider, even when he labors through five innings, has double digit strikeout upside. But like, mm -hmm. you know, we also. Like San Diego's struck out a lot this year. Fifth most against or sixth most sixth most against right-handed pitching. But like yeah. they also have a lot of pop. So he could go mid-tier. I agree on the Logan Gilbert thing. Um Milwaukee has been pretty good against right-handed um right-handed pitching this year. They've been way worse against lefties. Yeah, well, they, that, that lineup is just full of lefties, right? From yeah. Winker to Mitchell to Telez to Yelich for sure. Um you know, we just Gil, Gilbert is a a stud in the making, right? Like he we is. talked about it for a few seasons now. He's not, you know, he's I think it was this his third year, third full season yep. maybe as a, yep. as a pitcher. Um, definitely due to be a breakout at some point. Um, you know, I and like we said, more more tournaments because Milwaukee is what they are. They'll either yep. you know go go nuts or do nothing at all. So, um. How are we feeling about the 7K tier? There's Greg Jamison, there's Chris Sale, there's Nathan Evaldi. I like Evaldi. Like you said, I'm willing to go back to the well. And like we said last time, it's like we're not like hell-bent on Nathan Evaldi. If you want to look into his last start and stack KC, that's fine. They also have the ninth highest K rate in the league against right-handed pitching. They also have a 621 team OPS against right-handed pitching. You know who's worse than them, John? The Tigers and the Nationals. That's who. So when you're in like Tigers and Nationals company, mm -hmm. like, yeah, using guys against that, you know, lineup is fine. You said it like, yeah, he got destroyed 10 hits. Like, that's not good. Yeah. But he had seven strikeouts. And just to our point, the Royals just strike out a lot. Jacob DeGrom was striking out a lot of guys before he left with the wrist soreness yeah. on Monday. Um they are 
they have good players. They have Bobby Witt. They have MJ Melendez. They have Bobby pa- or uh, Pasquatino. Bobby Vinny Pasquatino. Holy yeah. cow! I was Bobby, Bobby Witt, Pasquatino. Vinny Pasquatino. I was trying to combine the. They have they have those four, yeah. and then it just drops off a cliff. So like, yeah, yeah I, I'm good with Avaldi. Uh, Chris Sale. So I had a 5% strikeout rate for Kansas city against Friday. So, so if you had, uh, if anyone out there listened to the seasonal podcast that Matt sells and I did last week, we discussed the Chris sale numbers and sales actually took the side of dropping him in seasonal. I took the side of holding on to him and no, I'm not saying that because uh, I accidentally bid nine dollars on Chris Sale in in an auction draft that John may or may not run, and um, didn't answer my message about it. Um, but there Probably are the there are <laughs> there are peripheral numbers suggesting Chris Sale is going to bounce back, and also like factoring in that he's pitched in fourteen games since the year twenty nineteen, also just has to play a part, like. He's missing a boatload of bats. Yeah, good strikeout numbers. He also has an astronomical ERA, but his Sierra, which for anyone who doesn't know is a skill interactive ERA, is 382. And his XFIP is expected fielder independent pitching, 374. Like there's su- things that suggest that Chris Sale is due for, you know, positive. Like say it, positive regression. regression. So yeah. like, I'm okay getting to Chris Sale now. Minnesota does have a few guys that hit lefties well, but they're 23rd in OPS. And John, they have a 28% strike rate against lefties this year. Small yeah. sample. They haven't faced a lot of lefties. I'm okay going to Sale in tournaments. Um, probably not going to get to Drew Jameson because Pitch he isn't. Is not there yet. He yeah. just is not there. So like. I'm okay getting to Valdi. I'm okay getting to Sale. Um, Thirty percent strikeout rate on the year, by the way, for uh, Sale. So yeah, no, he's dude. He's there are. There's a lot to like about what Chris Sale's doing. There's also obviously like on the surface you look at it, you're like, oh, that's you know, yep. But again, we don't. We shouldn't always look at surface numbers. We we've talked about it the last Kyle Freeland. <laughs> right, like- Kyle Freeland. We talked about it last week with um, Zach Granke. Like, there's been plenty of times that we've said like, yeah, I mean, just look at the numbers. There is regression near and, you know, we don't know everything, but like some, some just, you know, reading the tea leaves is right. It, it, it helps sometimes, you know? Yep. 100%. All right. Let's move our way down here a little bit uh, under seven K range. Uh, you know, Velasquez is there at $6,400 as we've talked about uh, coming off of his best start in a bit, six shutout out against St. Louis, six strikeouts, but, in cores, most likely not going to no go shot. there. Yeah, no shot. Uh, Colin Ray here, uh, we kind of laughed him up in that matchup. <laughs> we, sure, we sure did. And uh, he shoved it right down our throat. I don't know yeah. if it's repeatable, <laughs> but <laughs> five and two-thirds against San Diego, a run, six strikeouts, uh, 83 pitches there. He's got Seattle. Um, you know, do, do, do any of these guys pop off to you? Uh I don't know if we need to. Um, Brad Ke- you know what? Brad Keller's Brad been Brad really Keller's good. been – he has been and awesome. you touted Jordan Lyles today. Kudos to you, and, and that smash, so. Yeah, like, I, I'm going to – like, Texas has a good lineup when they're healthy. They're just not healthy. And I'm going to keep saying that. I'm, I'm sorry that I keep repeating myself, everybody, and John has listened to me the most about it. But, like, you know, they hit Travis Jankowski second. <laughs> That was that was who hit second. And their first inning, the first play of the game, Marcus Simeon reached on an error. And then something we talked about, Josh Young, perfect profile for, you know, fly ball pitcher, homers, right? That was the first inning, three run home run. After that, one solo home run to Marcus Simeon. Jordan Lyles went eight innings, two earned runs. That was it. So I don't think like all that highly of Texas, they are obviously are potent and there was no Adolis and like they could, you know, Adolis likely back in the lineup and all that good stuff. And, yep. but yeah, Brett Keller's been awesome. And if he's going to continue to be awesome, he needs to, like we've said a bunch, limit the fly balls. Most fly balls he allows against Texas. He allows a home run. So he yep. needs to 
you know, limit that. But yeah, I think Brad Keller is the one clear uh, spend down here. Can't go to Clark Schmidt. He stunk. Um, I mean, this this tier down here is. Yeah, this is, this is Gray. You know, even though. Yeah, he, you know what? He's been pretty good. He's been limiting the home runs, right? You know why? Like, did you did you see why he's not throwing his fastball? Well, yeah, he's not that throwing fastball was the very force. straight, yeah. <laughs> very straight, and yeah. 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 You know, um, yeah. yes, he 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 swerved the world going into Colorado throwing six innings of one run baseball. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not going to pitch him against Baltimore because we we yeah. like Baltimore. So, um, I'm with you. Then and Keller would be the dark throw down here for me. Um, and then we we kind of settle into some of those, uh, you know, Evaldi, Gilbert, Stroman, and then you know maybe Strider, I guess here, yep. uh, or Montgomery. You like Montgomery too. Uh, over on the catcher position, again, we're kind of playing, seeing where we're where we're at at this position here. Murphy gets Blake Snell. We generally like Murphy against the lefty. Uh, could certainly go there. Uh, Logan O'Hop, someone that we've thrown in the lineups. Price is up there a little bit at forty three hundred, but he gets Schmidt as you as you talked about there. Uh, he's in that mid 4K range. Cal Rally homered tonight off Corbin Burns. Uh, he's forty three hundred dollars. Uh, first half of this catcher position. Anybody jump out to you? Um, I mean, Brutchman is obviously if you want to get there, no problem getting there. Um, Josiah Gray still can if he does throw fastballs, like he's in trouble. Blake Snell's been really bad, so if you want to use Sean Murphy hitting in the middle of that lineup, obviously can get there. Um, and O'Hop is fine. Um, I'm trying to look up the official splits for uh, Clark Schmidt. He's been bad, man. Um, he's just been dry. The pitch count's been what's really bit him in the butt. He hasn't been able to go deep into games. Uh, I'm trying to look at the splits here for Clark Schmidt. Uh, lefties are what's killing Clark Schmidt. This mm-hmm. year, so um, maybe not going to get to O'Hop at 4,300. Uh, Cal Rally, fine. We know the left side is his power side. Yep. Uh, Jan Gomes is twenty nine hundred dollars. He started tonight against a lefty. There's another lefty on the mound in Waldachuk here. Um, if we're looking to punt catcher, I think he's in play. And I still will th- consider Ryan Jeffers if he finds himself into the lineup against uh, Sale uh, at twenty eight hundred. They hit him in the middle of their lineup. So, um, and Jeffers is has been pretty good when when given the opportunity to play this year. Yes, and he hits lefties. That's what he does. Um, so I like Jeffers. I like Jan, and I like Kyle Higashioka. Who I was hits, say Higashioka against a lefty, right? Yeah, he he literally own like he might go for four or he might hit two home runs. That's <laughs> all he does against lefties. Nothing in between. So um, yes, I I like all three of those guys for sure. All right. First base position here. We know the usual suspects are at the top. Talk to me about that 5K and above range. Over 5K, I mean, I like Shohei Otani quite a bit here. Clark Schmidt has struggled. Otani in Yankee Stadium, his future. Yeah. Otani only pitched two innings today, by the way, because of the rain delay. So, like, yeah. remember yeah. last time he pitched, he didn't play the day after? I wonder yeah. if if that will impact or not. Mike Trout did not play today on Monday. Um, so they got to expect him back in the lineup. So I, I do wonder if Otani is in or if he's out just because he only pitched two innings due to the rain. Right. Um, good point. Good point. If he plays, I mean, he, you know, he wants to get used to the future stadium he's going to play in. So mm-hmm. um, I like him 63 Alonzo for a, a tournament dart, of course, Goldschmidt sat on Monday. If you want to play him on Tuesday, that's fine. Freeman homered uh, after we pretty much said, like, can't get to him because he's not homering at 55. Right. Jokes on us. Um, Where would I go? I mean, like. Tar- I don't play Toronto that often, but I, I don't think your key is all that good, personally. No, he was a reverse split sky, too, for the last couple seasons. Let's mm-hmm. see if that's still the case. I know, I know this year his numbers are, are good, but like I don't generally consider they. I think didn't last year they even take him out of their rotation at the end there. Like I, I don't really consider him to be all that dominant of a pitcher. He's not. He's not. I agree. Um. So yeah, I can get to that'd be interesting. The only thing with Vlad and I would say the Blue Jays is how expensive they are, and I feel like just seeing the bottom of that pitcher position, like Gray, Velasquez, Schmidt, Creamer, Waldachuk. Urena, like hard to get to these guys. 
we're gonna find some juicy stacks that like i might just rather play but i mean we know vladdy's live for uh, all right let's go to the mid-tier range then um not a ton. I mean, I think Mount Castle against Gray could be doable at 47. You know, Nathaniel Lowe, if we're not playing Keller at 45. But other than that, nothing really popping for me here. No, I think we go down Pasquatino, 3,600. Yeah. Uh, he's been very good. I'm pretty sure that he homered off of Aldi, right? That was the home run? Uh, no, he homered yesterday. Oh, yeah, 10-1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He homered off of Aldi, I think. Yep. Um, he's really good. He's just a really good hitter, so I can get there. Carlos Santana, run it back. I know he's better against the lefties, but the power is from the left side, right? Yeah. Um, yes. He, um, yes. He The power is from him batting lefty, but he hits under 200 for like the last four years from the left side of the plate. Right. But right. Urena is bad enough that maybe that won't matter. So, right. but it's like a he had like sixteen home runs from the from the left side of the plate and like two from the right side. Right. Of the plate. So it's right. all power. Um, so like, yeah, I, I can get behind um, some Carlos Santana. Mancini's been really bad, but so has Waldachuk. So mm -hmm. if you want to play Mancini, like you know, be my guest. Okay. That's probably where that's probably where the uh the first base train stops yeah. on stops yeah, yeah. on tracks. Cass has had an RBI today again. At some point I think he wakes up, but it's probably too risky to kind of have uh consistently trust uh trust there. So uh second base position. They still give you Mookie Bats. You got Simeon as you mentioned there. You had Torres against Suarez at forty seven hundred dollars. Uh, we got we got our St. Louis guys here. We got McMahon against Velasquez at 45. Uh, Nico Horner's having himself a little day today. Uh, not stealing any bases yet, but a couple of hits, a couple of runs scored. I think he just got an RBI there as well. So uh, he's got Walda Chuck at $4,400. Aussie Albies against a lefty again. Blake Snell's on the mound here at $4,400. So uh, thoughts on the first half of second base position? So I think Jose Suarez is in deep trouble here against yeah. the Yankees. Um, he has been absolutely atrocious against righties this year. 444 average, 1,200 OPS, 507 Woba. That's right-handed bats. Uh, the Yankees have a few very good right-handed bats. Uh, most of their lineup is right-handed. I love Glaber Torres here, 4,700. Um, I'm definitely okay getting to Betts or Simeon. I just think Glaber stands out like a sore thumb. I think mm -hmm. Ryan McMahon... Obviously, in the righty-lefty split is a, a very good play. Same with LeMahieu. I like that LeMahieu has multi-position eligibility. I don't like that it's third because um, that's unfortunate. Right. But he's been good this year. Um, you know, last year was a very weird year for LeMahieu because he was really good, hurt, got hurt, and then came back and just, like, never was good again. Um, so I would get to LeMahieu. We love Nico Horner over here. This is the Nico Horner podcast. Uh, yeah. So... Um, definitely can get there. And now because, like you said, gets lefty again. I'm fortunate that he hasn't homer yet. Cause like, uh, both you and I loved Ozzy Albies on, um, he just walked, he just walked though. So, you know, he did walk good for Ozzy. I'm so happy he walked now. Steal oh, three got, bases. Got, oh, got a force out though. Uh, so kind of, unfo kind of unfortunate. <laughs> Unlucky. Uh, okay. No stolen bases for Ozzy Albies then. So, um, oh. uh, but yeah, I mean, we profiled it on yesterday's podcast and live stream that, the career numbers are just astronomical for Albies over a 320, I think 320 average yeah. over a 900 OPS career. So um, no problem getting to Albies. Nolan Gorman. To, this is like the best second base we've had probably all year. I, I in, you know, in Bay as well, he's the lefty righty versus yep, Urena. Yep. He's sure. at 4k. He's actually having a pretty good night tonight as well. So hard to we, not have a good night when your team scored 13 runs, but uh, you know, he is, he hitting ninth tonight is uh one for three with three runs scored and two rbi so he is very good he is very good and he probably leads off um with the right oh, yeah, with, the, with the righty on the mound you think yep they've been leaning him off a couple uh the last few times the righty's been brian hayes leads off with lefties and then jay Juan bay leads off with uh righties on the mound. so pretty good pretty good spot there for bay um further down here any value second baseman on your radar i mean 
like Rodolfo will hit third or be in the lineup every day, and he's yeah. multi position eligible. He's just not as good against um, righties. righties. Luis Garcia has been okay. He's homered in two of his last three. He gets Dean Kramer. Um, hits in six of his last seven. I don't hate that as a punt, but other than that, we can move on to third. All right. Over at third base, again, generally our spend up spot, Austin Riley homer tonight. He gets another lefty matchup in Snell. Uh, Rafael Devers, the team just keep pitching to him, and he just keeps hitting the baseball. He's already got seven home runs on the year. Uh, top price guy there. Arnado gets Jameson, Machado Strider. Muncy gets McGill. You know, where are we, you know, where are we going here? Wisdom homered for the fourth straight game. He's got a lefty matchup in Waldachuk. Um, so it's definitely Devers. Okay. If like I almost prefer Devers as like kind of a one off as opposed to a Boston stack because mm-hmm. Sonny Gray's been so good, but um Devers can hit against anybody. So I love Devers. Uh Austin Riley, obviously against a lefty homer first pitch he saw on Monday. Um, and then it's probably wisdom. You're right. Like he's been awesome. Um, homering in four straight games. I'm looking up the wall to Chuck splits right now. Uh, he's been another guy just allowing a ton of power, 4.2 home runs per nine innings. Um, six home runs against righties in 13 innings, John. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my. He is like Patrick wisdom's finds dude. himself in a pretty good spot here, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm happy I like the Cubs this year because, like, I I, I feel like Horner, I got a, I feel Williams like Bay is back I, now. You by know? the way, Nico Horner, John. I don't know if you bet uh, stolen base for Nico Horner, but that just uh, you know he that one? occurred. He did uh, him and Dansby. Look, I'm happy I got on the the Cubs bandwagon early. I feel like this year, if you bet the Nico Horner stolen base prop, you'll come out on top. Like if you're like over 162 game span, like if yeah, you because bet, like most nights over half a stolen base for Nico Horner is like three to one odds. So right, right. if you bet it every game and you're getting three to one on your money, without doing the math on air, it feels like <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to be right here. Say he on, steals John, 40, do the math. If he steals 40 bags, right? Like you know, that's enough, isn't it? Do the math. Do the. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, no, it is. Um, especially you know. Who knows what you're betting, right. Nico Horner? Like you could be betting some big dollars on Nico Horner stolen bases yeah. and be rich. Um, so all that to say, Cubs again. Cubs again. Up six one right now on the A's. So in the uh, fourth in the fourth inning. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, the A's are very bad. They are. They're very. Except bad. Astoria Ruiz. Except for Astoria Ruiz. It's true. Um, all right. After wisdom, we move our move our way down a little bit. Uh, who are we targeting then uh, at, as a you know mid to value tier third baseman? Uh, yeah, Longo mentioned. does have a lefty matchup, thirty yep. five hundred bucks. Yep, tough matchup. Um, Josh yeah. Dong homer today, as you mentioned, right? Yep. Hit fourth, so certainly yep. a spot for him there. Uh, anybody else for you? Um, I want to believe in Gunnar Henderson, and maybe the two for the two for four, three runs scored. You know, get some jump started. Uh, he is constantly on base. He just needs like he's hitting 178 this year. John Gunnar Henderson has a 373 OBP. Like the guy just needs to hit. Like if he hits, he'd have a 500 on base percentage. Yeah. What's he his bat- a, What's his batting average in balls in play? He has a 373. That is cr- that's kind of crazy, is it not? Like the fact that he is hitting one the under like under the Mendoza line and he has uh his BABIP this year is 304. So, so it's, he's not even getting bad batted balls. He's line. not. No, he has a 35% K rate. He has a 22% walk rate. That's just insane. Yeah. That's insane. So just um, bad, he, is it just bad contact for him then? Like uh, let's see. The hard hit rate I mean, no, I'm uh 25% hard. So he has zero According to fan graphs, he has registered a 0% soft contact rate this year. Zero. Zero point zero. Zero soft contact percent? He has a 75% medium contact rate and a 25% hard hit rate. What's his line drive rate? 17%. The ground balls, I guess, are a little up. 46% ground ball rate is not great. 
Um, 37% fly ball rate is actually kind of good. Um, but like zero, zero registered soft contact is nuts. That is yeah. nuts. It's not good. Oh, I mean, it's great, but it's not good that he has not converted any of that. No. Yes. Correct. Um, interesting. All right. Value guys down here. Uh, any names pop for you? Montero at home, fine. Um, that's probably, yeah. There's nothing down here for me. There's really, nothing down here. That's probably Mustakis if he finds himself in the lineup against Washington. <laughs> sure. sure. Uh, if you want, if you want to play him, if you want right. to play him. Wait, Velasquez, what's the uh, what's the strikeout prop? Because if Moose is in the lineup, that's at least two strikeouts that I can guarantee Vince Velasquez. <laughs> Maybe in the same inning if they bat around, you know. Mm, all right, shortstop. <laughs> let's just let's just. You don't you know. want you don't want me to you don't want me to to crap on your boy Moose anymore. I'm sorry. Uh no. Uh, where do you go? Where do you go? Dansby, Dansby against Wall of the Truck. Yeah. Yep. 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 Cubbies. Uh, Cubbies. Can run back Bobby Witt against Evaldi. I'm fine there, but it was part of the three straight three hit games for Witt. Yep. Um, Correa gets sale at 46. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean. For everything sales doing like seemingly good, he is allowing a lot of power. Yep. Uh our boy uh, Jorge Mateo. Uh still still absolutely a brutal littering baseball. Did you see the tweet today about him? I'm gonna no. look for it. Um, is he cheating? <laughs> so through through uh let's see. Okay. So Vlad Sedler of FTN tweeted today, okay? Yep. I'll give it, Vlad the uh, the shout out here. Yeah. The number one player in fantasy baseball through two and a half weeks was is Ronald Acuna. Number two is Jorge Mateo. Dude, facts. <laughs> he is the number bases, two. Three home runs. He's hitting three seventy nine over the last ten. Three seventy two on the year. He just he's not he's not striking out as much. He doesn't walk ever, but like he is just getting on base. I mean, that doesn't matter, right? Because he's just yeah, no. the walks don't even matter. He's just so good. I know. I I mean, Mateo at forty two here against Gray. That's pretty. My the only issue I have with Mateo, and he maybe he's forcing their hand at some point. Is they hit him like seventh or eighth. It's like a yeah. gross spot in the lineup. Yep. Uh, if he could somehow work his way into the top one slot maybe or not i don't even <laughs> like it better if he hit ninth right just yeah give me a wraparound yep um but mateo in 42 is pretty pretty decent here Dude, uh, if he's gonna have this upside then there's undoubtedly he he's playing like a 5k player right he is playing yeah. like a 5k player he almost was priced that way 47 and then he went for 22 fantasy points and then they're like you know what let's drop his price back 500 dollars. right 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 um Let's see here. Volpe is 33. He's been leading off. Does he lead off again? Um, Dude, if he leads off, like he gets on and goes. If he is on first base, he's another one that's just going. He, mm -hmm. He's just stealing. He's just running. He had three stolen bases the other day. He has seven stolen bases already. Yeah. He has n one multi-hit game. He knows what he's on the field for. Yes. He actually, dude, he's he's obviously going to be really good. I Like, I think. If you watch, like you just watch him, he he just looks the part. Mm -hmm. Um, there's gonna be power coming, and I already profiled it. Like Jose Suarez is really, really bad against righties. Volpe is close to a plug and play for me. I like Von Gersom 34, but I want He's Aaron either hitting ninth or first. So like I want Aaron Judge. I'm telling you right now, we're plugging it, we're playing Aaron Judge. I don't even yeah, care. We're I just, gonna get I just, there. I just hit the button for you. We're we're going to play Stroman, too. I, I've hit two buttons. We played yeah, Stroman, Stroman and Judge. Judge. Agreed. Um, I think getting Judge is – I think Volpe probably is a priority to, like, help that because, like, facilitating another Yankee in the stack, and he's 3,300. So I, I love Anthony Volpe. I don't think there's much else down here. Maybe C.J. Abrams, if you wanted to take a dart on a really fast guy, like hitting one in the gap. Sure. Um, like he's done a couple times. I think he had a two-triple game in cores. So well, like, talk, talk to me about Nito. I know he hasn't had a good yeah. start. Um, he did have a hit today. He won for five with a run scored. Um, you know, one of the top prospects in the Angels system. He hit leadoff. Uh, 
you mentioned Schmidt not being any good here. Three thousand dollars. Would you play Zach Nito? Yeah, I'm just I'm interested if they're gonna continue to lead him off or not. Um because he hasn't been great and they could just like pivot and go back to Taylor Ward. You gotta off, give him which... more than three games though, don't you? Like Yeah, I mean I you're also like you know, you're just he hadn't hit above double like really played above double A. You're just gonna like vault him into your leadoff spot immediately. They did. Um they, they, they they're the angels. They do no, a lot I mean, of they do. <laughs> well, that doesn't make me feel any better about playing them. <laughs> um yeah, look, Schmidt has struggled more against lefties, but um I'm okay getting to Nito. He's stone cold men, so okay. no, he's he's three K now. He oh, or three it was Stone Cold Men, three K. Um at that point, I'd rather just play Volpe. I don't know why it was just I looked at it and I still said Stone Cold Men despite okay. looking at it. Uh, all right, let's go on over to the outfield position here. Again, 11 games on the slate, so many, many options for us. Uh, we've already clicked Aaron Judge, though. He's $6,400. Uh, around him, yeah, Jordan against Bassett here, uh, which we haven't talked a lot of Houston. I feel like Bassett no, is, could be a, a target for us. Uh, Otani at 63, Rodriguez against Colin Ray is up to 62, Acuna against a lefty at $6,100. You know, there's just, there's a lot of, a lot of guys. Brian Reynolds will be hitting from the left side of the plate here at $5,800 in cores. You know, that's going to be a great pivot to him. Trout against Schmidt. Mullins is up to $5,500, but we like the gray matchup for him. I mean, uh, endless amount of 5k players. here. Like I am, we're, we're, th- Maybe 30 <laughs> players deep at 5K. Um, Judge tops them all for me. He's going to be the player with the most likely odds to hit a home run. Uh, Acuna's right there. He's been amazing. I don't disagree on the Astros. Bassett hasn't been the same guy this year. Although he has settled in the last couple starts, he's looked pretty sharp. Um, you could definitely get to those guys. You know, what do we do with Pittsburgh again? Because they scored 13 runs. They dropped 13 runs on Colorado's head. Um, and they have the worst, maybe one of the worst pitchers in baseball. So, like, what do you do there? Like, do you just not play cores? You know, you just don't go to Brian Reynolds, who had a big night before getting subbed out of the game. Sorry, John. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm okay getting to Brian Reynolds 58. I think that's a very interesting play. I'm also okay getting to Chris Bryant, who had his first course field home run in a Rockies jersey. The rest of the position, like Saya 52. I know 52 right. is expensive for Saya, but Waldachuk's been a can and given up a lot of home runs. Yeah, Taylor Ward is 5K. Ian Happ, 51 in that same matchup. Yep. Huge extension for Happ. He has already broken a couple slates. He has power, speed, upside for Happ. Like, I, endless amount of guys, as you mentioned, above 5K. Yeah, there's, there's uh, definitely just... Buxton against Sale, like <laughs> yeah, I know. Home run uh, waiting to happen there. Yeah, McCutcheon homer today against the lefty. I mean, he still gets Urania at five k. Um, Yoshida will be back in the lineup. He's forty seven. Why did they hit him sixth on Monday? He's been hitting like fourth. What was like the? Well, I don't. I honestly haven't. I think it's because Duvall's out in the lineup. They're trying to like spread out. Stag- their... They're trying to like stagger the lefty. Yeah, range. I think so, but. Uh, I, I don't know. It's Boston, man. I don't even know how they. I don't know how they they win games. That they win games. So. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, they're in, they're in shambles. They're such such a frustrating team to watch. Uh, that said, uh, Alex Verdugo is forty five hundred dollars. Uh, Dart Dalton Varsho is forty four. Pretty good spot for Varsho here. Uh, I think again, I'm not high on Yukiti. I don't know. I, I know the numbers have been okay, but I just don't. I don't think he is that dominating of a pitcher. Where you get them against a team like Toronto, and, and I think they could maybe put some. They could, you know, Toronto's a team that any slate could be the highest scoring team on the board. Sure, sure. Um, so, what what other mid tier four K guys are you? Uh, wow, look at they bumped up my boy Burleson after dropping four K, <laughs> dropping down the thirty four hundred homers up to forty one hundred dollars here. So, and it's funny because like they obviously had this laid out before he even took an at bat. So like right. they. Before he even hit a home run, he was back up to 4,100. They were just like, all right, we don't know what to do with you. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, like, both the Cardinals, whoever's in the lineup, Newt Bar, Burleson, like, they're both fine. Lourdes Gurriel gets lefty. He'll hit third in that lineup. Um, I don't like a lot here. Like, Corbin Carroll, unfortunately, 3,600. Congrats. Congrats. We're, we're finally making it to a place 
that you know we're only now fourteen hundred dollars away than we're. <laughs> um, it is a lefty lefty matchup for him. It is a lefty lefty matchup. Uh, I I mean, look, Colin Ray. Okay. <laughs> you don't count okay, here. <laughs> like, like, are you telling me that this guy? who hadn't pitched in Major League Baseball. He had made one appearance since 2020. He had made 10 appearances since 2016. He's just going to go out there and ice the Padres, <laughs> not really allow any damage, and we're just going to be like, oh, yeah, Colin Ray's figured it out. I, I'm not saying that. Okay. Then... There's no freaking way a 32% K rate. He had a 32% K rate. That just seems impossible to. Yeah. The 42... Padres lineup was a team that was frustrating last year. Like they were loaded oh. and they did, there'd be games where like they didn't score. So. Well, they'll be loaded on Thursday. Starting yeah. Thursday, every night will be a very tough. Is Tatis uh, back on Thursday? Yes. And he has had, have you seen what he has done? I've he heard, has, I, I've seen highlights. He has like 10 home runs in his last 12 at-bats. Yeah. Yeah, no, they're they're throwing him underhand at Triple A. I mean, like, that doesn't even make sense, dude. Um, anyways, Colin Ray in this start, okay? You take the good, the thirty-two percent strikeout rate that he apparently had, and I can't say that he didn't because he has it. Forty-two percent hard hit rate, fifty percent fly ball rate. Gosh dang it, the Mariners are going to score twenty runs off this guy. <laughs> Five days after we thought the Padres were going to score 20 runs off him. Um, I love Jared Kelly, like 3,500. Yeah. Love the spot. Yeah, yeah I'm with you. Uh, I think that's probably another click and play for us here. Yep. Uh, Kelly at 35. Uh, moving our way down the list, uh, Jordan Walker is still $3,400. You know, certainly can be a guy that's in play here. Um, let's see. Anybody else? Frankie, 3,100 against Suarez. Does he find himself? In a lineup yeah. here, Cordero. Um, no standing on IR, right? So yeah, yeah. I wonder what they're gonna do. They have Oswaldo yeah. Cabrera is probably the lean that I would say. Like I prefer the Yankees outfielders. Um, he hits pretty good from the right side of the plate. He's probably gonna start. I wonder if they start IKF in the outfield. I wonder if they start freaking Aaron Hicks. In the do they do Hicks still? Yeah, because like they have Calhoun and they have Cordero, two ex uh, top prospects the Yankees have tried to take shots yeah, on. Really? Take um, on yeah. Really Calhoun? yeah. I think that they're going to. So I think Judge, Cordero, and either Hicks or IKF is probably their starting outfield. Okay. Um, I, I like Cabrera at 2,500. Um, I don't think I'd go Frenchy lefty lefty. Is it a lefty lefty for Frenchy? Yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Cordero is a lefty. You're Cordero, right. You're right. Uh, Suar right. and Suar and Suarez is the. Yeah, for whatever reason, I thought he was a righty, even though I clicked and it clearly says left. So okay. Um, I'm looking up uh, Cabrera splits because I'm pretty sure he was better. Yeah, like all his power was it came against um, right-handed pitchers last year, but he hit 286 against lefties last year. So mm -hmm. I would I would take a shot on Oswaldo Cabrera. Uh, of the Yankees outfielders, not name Aaron Judge. Okay. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anybody else here. Uh, if Jack Suwinski's in the lineup, he's got hits in four straight games that he's been in the lineup for. Um, again, get get a cheap cheap Pirates bat here yep. against Urania, 2700 bucks. Yep. Um, Janikowski's going to hit second again, right? $2,500. Probably, yeah. Uh, there, uh, I wish they would stop facing lefties, Atlantic, because I've been I was just crushing Hilliard. You have uh, been crushing Hilliard, but not going to work with a lefty on the mound. Um, let's see, Jason Hayward will be in the lineup at twenty five hundred bucks. Not sure if you want to go there against McGill. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, that might be it. Jaron Duran. Maybe Raymond Tapia. What about Jaron Duran? Do they call okay. Duran up? Yeah, he he played uh he played on Monday. He has oh, stolen okay. base. Uh, yeah. Based. If he's stone, in the lineup, stone cold stone cold men. They send they send Bobby Dahl back down. Yeah, listen that we're kind of shorts we're kind of shortstop. <laughs> yeah, listen, 
Jaron Duran is a very interesting prospect. He just destroyed the minor leagues and too fast. Too fast. Yeah. It is, the, the play discipline has just never been there for, for the major league level. He also cannot play the outfield. Mm-hmm. For a guy that is ridiculously athletic and fast, reading a ball off the bat is a conf- a foreign concept to this man, uh, which is wild that he is an outfielder. What is he gonna? Uh, what is he gonna do? I don't There's know. nothing he can really do. Huh? I don't know. Uh, move, put him in front of the green monster. That's the only thing I can think. Of. Have him play <laughs> left field. Um, that's that's probably the only that's only the only thing I can possibly think of. Right. Um, he played center field last year. He had multiple balls just like go over his head. Um, he is just an absolute mess out there in the outfield. But he's so fast. Uh, yeah, listen, if he's in the lineup again, I will I will definitely have Duran because he – you talk about Volpe stealing three bases, Duran could s- steal three bases. Like, that's just – And he's 2K. He's 2K. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. I don't know if I would put him in this lineup unless we absolutely need probably, a value. Pro- yeah, probably not unless we need a value. But I think um, he's – if he's in the lineup, I agree. I think he's in our player pool. Uh, yeah, I think he deserves to be – they got to give him a chance to do – to develop – um a little bit more especially when especially now like they're in last place in the division there's no reason not just let duran either figure it out at the at the league level or not so right um let's see who else we have here victor robles has been hitting pretty well um 2100 bucks he's hitting 306 on the year he's got three stolen bases the last 10 games he's okay uh dan creamer's not very good no he's not no washington's not good but creamer's not good so um all right that's probably it here let's uh let's go ahead and build our lineup we got a couple of minutes left here uh in the show again remember we'll be back live at five o'clock eastern time uh make sure you go and subscribe to the fantasy alarm youtube channel uh turn on those notifications you'll get the notifications when we are live james and i will be there to answer questions uh build lineups for everybody again uh, you know and, and go through the slate any news and updates uh, that we have, of course, you can also follow all of our, all of our stuff over on the Better Sports Network. Uh, go ahead; you can sign up over there for free to register, uh, and you get access to their uh, Better Insights newsletter. Uh, you get a free bet of the day. I wrote that one up the other day on Thursday. Uh, we had the Wander Franco over a half a run for plus one thirty. That cash pretty easily. Uh, you know, once or twice a week, you'll find my best bet, my better bet of the day, rather is what they, is what they call it. Uh, in in the better insights, so uh, go over and sign up uh, over at bettersports.com for free uh, and start getting that newsletter sent directly to your email inbox. Uh, James, let's uh, let's kick it off here. We got Stroman already in our lineup as our SP one, uh, quote unquote SP one. What is our SP two? What did we decide on? Are we looking at Jordan Montgomery here at ninety five hundred dollars? Do you like the strikeout potential for Strider even in a tough spot against San Diego? Or are we looking maybe down more in the mid tier, a guy like Evaldi uh, or Sonny Gray? I know you were kind of high on. You know, where are we? Who's our SB two on this slate? Yeah, I don't think we need to um, spend up necessarily. Um, I like Evaldi. I like Sale. I like Logan Gilbert. Um, I think that's the range we should probably live in. I don't. I don't think we need to necessarily. I even like Brad Keller if we wanted to spend all the way down and get Keller at 66. So sure. um, I like any of those guys. I think Evaldi would probably be my favorite because I still think that um, Casey's lineup is pretty atrocious at this time. I, I get it. He pitched poorly against him. I know. It just happened. I yeah. know. You know, that is a five-inning sample. I say, like, <laughs> I've said this for four weeks now, like, you know, Jordan Lyles just pitched poorly against them and then twirled eight innings of two-run ball against them five days later. Right. So um, it's a new matchup. It's a it's a different ballpark. There's going to be different factors. Evaldi still missed a lot of bats. The Royals are still striking out a lot. I'm down to go back to Evaldi. All right. I'm, you know, you don't need to sell me on it. I'm, I'm a big fan. We'll go there. Uh, $3,900 a player then. Again, we've, we've already clicked in Kalanick and Judge here. So... Uh, we got an outfield spot. We got the rest of our infield for thirty nine hundred bucks a play. Uh, I know we had a handful of value guys at catcher that we didn't mind, whether it be uh, Higashioka or, or Jan Gomes. Uh, Ryan Jeffers was in play there at twenty eight hundred dollars. So, did, would you prefer a value 
under 3k guy or are we looking more in the the mid tier yeah it's probably sub 3k who do you um, prefer out of yanni who's having a, a decent little game here tonight yeah. Yeah, that was our guy against lefties. Let's let's okay. ride the Jan Gomes train. Jan Gomes train here. All right, forty one hundred, uh, first base. Uh, where was our where was our definite spend down? Was it Volpe? Did we want to go back to the well with him? We did. Or Jorge Mateo? Uh, let's go Volpe. Okay, he'll either hit ninth or first, right? So yep, yep. I'll right, be on 40, base for Aaron Judge regardless. Yep, forty three hundred dollars a player here, first, second, third, and outfielder. Uh, you like uh, Gliber. Why don't we just complete the stack here? Yep, agreed. Okay. 4,200, first, third, and outfield. We do have a, a Seattle player in our lineup here. Uh, Patrick Wisdom, third base, 4,500. Mm, yes, sir. Right, right. Big, yeah, having a big night again. I mean, he's just a monster. Yep. Uh, so we have first base with 4K a play. Uh, we can definitely punt an outfielder to get us one of the top first basemen on the, on the board here if we wanted to go there. Um, I, so we're I, fading course as of right now. Yeah, as of right now, we do not have course field. Um, unless we played a CJ Crone. Um, or yeah. if we played Carlos Santana and ran it back with like, it doesn't really get us much. It's forty seven hundred dollars an outfielder. J Juan Bay. Um, yeah. What is what is Bay in the outfield? Bay is four K. So yeah, so it'd be a four K, four K. Um. All right, so how do you want to approach this then? What what we what was our outfield that we we I mean can we get to? We probably can't really get to Reynolds. No, I think it's twenty three hundred dollar first baseman. Is that doesn't even exist? I don't I don't think it exists. Uh, Well, Donovan Solano actually probably plays right against Sale twenty one hundred bucks. Probably, but like, is (laughs) it like I know he's been good, but like. Is it worth playing Donovan Solano just to get Brian Reynolds? It's course. You know, I, I know but it's course. I know, but like we could do better than Donovan Solano, I think. Okay. Here, John. Um, he goes, if he hits a home run, I'll, you know, pay probably like 10 bucks or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, let's see here. Well, let's, let's do this then. We like Evaldi, but let's just play with some salary. We got some time. Let's go to Brad Keller. Sure. Go so back, Keller. That gives us forty-seven to play. A little Brad more. Little, been, he's been awesome. So. A little more. A little, a little more. Uh, a little more stretch here. Um, if we do, we 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 prefer to go against Urena. Uh, Urena. So, what is Pittsburgh offering us here? Pittsburgh is offering us Brian Reynolds. Take it's it. Or not, <laughs> really, not a lot. Um, J. Juan Bay does a one-off. Santana was 34. So yeah, it would be actually yeah, it would be Santana be and Reynolds. Reynolds. Yeah, that's, that would be it. And they have they're going to play Carlos Santana because um G Man Choice on the aisle. Right. I guess they could in theory play Kanan Smith and Jigba, who I think can play first base as well. Um, I think he's their backup first baseman right now, but like you know, Santana's right. pretty much playing every day, though. So yeah, he's good. No, he's good. He's 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 a fine yeah. play. He's yeah. the pot right pun play. The power is on this side. He's in cores against Urena. So right. Um, all right, so that's our line. Uh, we got Stroman and Keller. We got Jan Gomes, Carlos Santana, Gliber Torres, Patrick Winslow, uh, Volpe, Judge, Kalnick, and Reynolds. Give us a little two man Pittsburgh stack. I want the full Yankee stack here. Wisdom on the home run run. Kalanick there, and we got Yanni Gomes as our lefty split catcher play. Uh, that wraps up our podcast and live stream for the day. And we'll be back live at 5 o'clock Eastern, uh, breaking everything else down, updating you on all the news. Good luck, everybody. We'll talk to you all later.